and we also need to do one thing. We have a drainage fund. We need to make sure our drainage monies only go for drainage. In the past, that was not always true. Do it. So, what he says. So there's a lot. We know a lot. We know where the problems are. Uh, we have an we have a engineering firm, Quentin Hampton. They know where all the problems are. I have lots of fights with them at times because they like megalithic uh, solving. I say, if, you, if it costs more than 20 million, we ain't going to be able to do it right away. But there's a lot of hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, quarter million, three hundred thousand dollar projects that can make a big difference because a lot of you are only a couple of inches. So we, we got to take a look at that and we got to get going. Okay. I think we got a lot of things. We got, um, we got putting cuts through the US-1, getting water from east to west. We got uh, Doherty Canal. We got funding expenditures correctly. We've got backflow preventers, looking at the ditches that have been, and, and these canals that have been filled in. Uh, renewing infrastructure, that infrastructure that's crumbling. Let me throw another one, Burns. Burns. I, I happened to do, did a lot of work after I retired as police chief in New Orleans. You should see their burn structures. Now, some of them were built uh, improperly by, if you know New Orleans, almost everything is built improperly there. Uh, but if built properly, burns work well. And there's some problems we have with that canal that if we can't get the volume coming into the city down, we're going to have to raise it a little to get it by certain of our areas of the city so they don't flood automatically and then have backflow preventers all along so that the water doesn't flow out of the canal into the neighborhoods when it's too hot. So take a look at Berm. I don't care, but for some reason we're Berm averse. Uh, their neighborhood, which is down on Ruth Street, will never not flood when the Halifax Canal comes over the top. There's nothing we can do to stop that other than raise the whole neighborhood by about 10 feet, uh, which is a little expensive. Yeah, that was my original idea. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's um, getting in the sky. But that can be half of my neighbors. We've got about. Uh, Five minutes less, a little left before I want to go to, to the next section. So if you've got quick things you want to throw out that you've been holding back, that you want to throw out, try, try to give me quick things. Uh, yeah. One thing that I think would make myself, uh, I should have put myself first, but Sleepy Hollow. Uh, I know that they have a problem with these people here in the uh, old part of the city have a problem. Uh, where we have situations where there's a force uh, a forced discharge uh, that needs a pump attached to it where storm drains need to be cleaned out when there's areas the city has like over a dozen of the large pumps and stuff to be deployed. I would feel a lot safer. Sure, they would feel a lot safer. If we knew that there was a standard operational procedure, a plan of action, a mobilization, and so that when we get the thumb going off and it's a weather alert and it says we're going to have three inches of rain today that hey we see that we see them rolling out with the pumps we see something happening and we know it's in shape and the people that are close to these flooded out areas that flood frequently they can be the watchdogs if they know what to expect and they don't see it they can pick up a phone and call somebody and say hey what's you know What's being missed here? And uh, that would reduce damage and it would make a lot of people feel a lot better and allow people to participate as well. Uh, my observation is uh, when Dunlock flooded out the last time, the, the then public works director was asleep and didn't know about the storm by her own admission until the next morning when she was on the way to work and heard it on the news. Uh, and of course that was unacceptable. Uh, but not having a plan of action, I mean, why did she have to even be there? 
ever who's in charge, there was nobody in charge. We found that out a city manager ago. And having seen something in place that that doesn't happen again and knowing it's in place will go a long way mm -hmm. to make a lot of people feel better. In addition, it will go a long way in averting damages and stuff in the city. So that's, that's my big idea. And one thing I'd like to say too, I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer like Larry, uh, but I, I have a feeling what has happened and it's a, too late to close the barn door. We've had a lot of areas in the city where we've had ingrowth or infill. And we've had a lot of areas um, of new growth. And the new growth, especially after the certain year marks, I can't remember, I think 90, 96 and 98, 2002, everything had to be elevated higher. So now you can go certain, a lot of places in the city and you can stand in the parking lot of a newer building and you're actually looking down on the car roofs in the parking lot in the next property. And the new building, yes, they're supposed to have water retention and storage and treatment and all of that. But it's, it's raped on a 25 year storm, not a 100 year storm not 150 year storm. And honestly, I believe the 25 year storm is underrated. We are in Florida, we get a 25 year storm, year storm most every summer, at least once. This summer being the exception so far. And so as Brantford said, these swales and retention areas have filled with sediment over time. Some people, illegally go in and re-landscape. The, the cypress mulch runs off and winds up in the bottom of the retention area and just fills it up even more. So now not even the, what it was engineered to do is gonna happen, that capacity is not there. So now all of a sudden when you get even an inch of rain, it's running off on your neighbor and and not staying on the property where it was. We've engineered ourselves into a flooding problem is what I'm saying. And I don't know how to backtrack and fix that or whatever. And it's, it's, it's already, most of the city is already spoken for its planning. It's already in a, in a plan community development or you know, too late to go back and change that. But that's what we've done. And that's what we have to deal with. Do you have one question? Um, in just one second, is there anybody that hasn't gone yet or hasn't said anything about this? Oh, that's right. So you were talking about the obstruction of that rain and so you know, it's not free or something. I think it was the was it yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think because I know the fellow was my opinion he lives on that cold side. He says that it was never clear to play that that it's still in there. Is that correct? That is incorrect. Do you have video of that? We had to buy a special chisel nozzle board back on to chisel all that out. Yeah, if you want to run on your friends so we can charge them for that, that'd be yeah. great. And then we can, no, do, we we can do more drainage there. somewhere else because yeah. we have to pay for that. I know we put two, uh, <laughs> we filled by two dump trucks worth of grout, that full grout, to pull gas to pull out of that pipe. It was, it was impressive. Um, I know there's more to go, and, and I, I want to run through the, we've only got like 10 minutes left, but um, I want to run through this next part real quick, and then I will encourage everybody to also, um, if you had ideas that you hadn't um, given us yet, um, we will shoot out an email with a lot of this stuff, and then you can email us back or give us a call back and say, hey, I have one more thing I want to add to that list, and we can add it. And the last thing that I really want to do tonight is take a look, you can flip back over to the beginning, take a look at what we've done so far, and um, look, I'm not an expert, and, and besides from the people that work here and are engineers, anybody else a, a hydrologist, engineer, or whatever here? Okay, good. Oh, well, then you're cheating. You can't cheat. <laughs> okay, then listen to this guy, because he, maybe he'll know. Um, so what I'd like to do is kind of play engineer, budget analyst for a couple of minutes, and as a group, just kind of want to get consensus, and it's kind of an up or down question, or maybe middle of the road question, and we're going to kind of Put some, put some information in it. It may or may not be right, but we don't have the information to, to say whether it is or not 
and I don't think either of the engineers are here to either. I was talking to somebody on the phone the other day. Uh, my, my wife and kids are very allergic to the carpet that we have in our house, and I have to rip it up. Um, I'm thinking of just ripping it up and leaving it like that because I, I don't want to have to pay for anything else. Um, and I, but I was asking for quotes on the phone. It's like, well, that's like asking me to give you a haircut over the phone. I can't do it unless I come see it. So the engineers are probably the same thing. Like, I don't know what the real problem is. Like, this may be a symptom. I don't know the problem is, so I don't know how much it's going to cost or what the impact is going to be. But I, I just want to play that game for a couple of minutes. We're going to put that down here, and it's going to create a list. We'll see, you'll see what I mean in a second. So basically, we've got the project, and I'll kind of read out the project name. And if, if you don't remember what the description was or what it really meant, whoever said that can kind of say, that's what I meant, OK? And then we're going to say, do you think that's really expensive or cheap? I mean, not cheap, but relatively expensive or not so expensive. Plus. Yeah, more or less expensive. The impact. What overall impact do you think that's going to have? If it's uh, an isolated thing that will affect one or two properties, the impact of that's going to be pretty low. If it's an overall regional, let's meet to look at the regional issues, that's going to be a very high impact if we can actually do those things. Looking at it and doing it are two things also. And then if we find stuff that two arrows, so if it's, um, let's look at this first one. Project is the pond at Publix the Sleepy Hollow. Um, looking at, and that's, that's not on their property, that's near their property. There were two different ones. It's, it's near their property. And it's currently, is it currently, they, is it owned by the Homeowner Association or owned by, we're not sure who it's owned by. Uh, okay, let's assume, we've, let's assume we've got a buyer or something. Okay, to buy that property and put it in a pond, um, you think it's really, really expensive or <coughs> maybe not so expensive? I think it's not. Half a million. Is that group? So, okay, so I've got less spilling and taste great. Is it, I mean, just think about all the other things that we talked about. Do you think that's really, really expensive or not so expensive? It doesn't matter. It's going to be really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to cost way more than way more than that. You can get the land. You a million, that. million dollars. Three, three million dollars. Do I hear six? Is this like, <laughs> this is like Price is Right. Whoever gets it close to the bottom wins the showcase show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's say maybe according to some other stuff, maybe it's kind of expensive. One to three million dollars. So we'll put we'll put it up there. Uh, impact. Um, in terms of the city-wide, is that going to have an impact city-wide on a neighborhood, overall neighborhood? So maybe it's a middle-of-the-road impact. It's not one house, but it's, it's a neighborhood. So let's kind of give it a, a circle. That's like, that, that's an arrow pointing straight at you. That's, I'm not artistic, what can I say? Um, so quick win, QW means quick win. Is it a quick win? The only time we're going to put a quick win here is if both these arrows are pointing up. So right now, we're not going to put an arrow pointing it up right here. All right. Um, more drains, Nova to Rose Bay, South Willow. Um, not expensive. Just to, to put in the drains. Now, what if there's no pipes connecting them and you're just putting in a random drain? Is that going to help? No. Okay, so we got to put in the drains. You got to put in the pipes too. Drains So we've got to extend piping and then put the drains in. Expensive? Okay. Um, impact. Does, is it going to impact the whole neighborhood, the house, the city? The neighborhood. The neighborhood. So we'll, we'll do a dot. Air is pointing at you. Watch out. It's coming through. Um, clean out B21 canal. Expe is it expensive? Is it like totally filled in or it just needs to be cleaned out? Oh, wait, we can use the new grade oil, right? <laughs> until, until, yeah. until it breaks down. It's a lot more reliable than the mini market. It's probably not expensive. So let's say that's a. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's a down. Down is good on this one. Um, will it have a uh, medium impact, high impact, low impact? B21 now. How many? High impact? Okay, high impact. So you know what? That's a quick win. Found a quick win on the first sheet. That's pretty good. Um, review drainage, grandfather. Um, not very expensive. Very inexpensive. Two hundred fifty dollars an hour. Well, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, when you think about it, like I mean, not that expensive when you're talking about millions of dollars, right? Yeah. Um, impact could possibly be high because let's say, let's say that was an issue, and there are a bunch of properties. And then we need to bring it to the city council and say, this is what the council agreed to in 2050, whatever years ago. Do you want to change it? 
then it's a, then it's a question on them. If, if we, if it's an issue, if we change it, we can analyze what the impact will be to change it. Could possibly be a high impact. So that could possibly be a quick win if we find the information we're looking for. And if it's a, if it's an easy to fix. Do uh, you want to do your first page? Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Uh, thanks, Nixon and Sugar Plum. Thanks, Alpha Plum. Uh, Nixon and Sugar Plum. That affects the uh, sugar mill school. It affects most of that old neighborhood. They have no place to play because it's blood. So that's an impact. What about cost? Yeah. We don't even know what the issue is, I guess, right? Right, and it's a high impact, but what's the cost? High cost. So it's a high cost, high impact. So it's not necessarily a quick win, but it's both things. It's just their building caused the problem. They should fix their own space. That's what we're all trying to say. Need for development and wipe this out. Drainage system behind the Boscos? Yeah. Drainage system behind the Boscos. Is that it's covered over? It's not working right? It's There's a whole bunch of drains in the neighborhood. They redid the road shortly after I moved in there so that they all go to these drains. And one's right at the edge of my property. So if the water doesn't get to go down those drains, I become a lake, and a lot of the other drains all end up with standing water. So the roads end up covered in water. So it could be two things. It could be that... that, that so they that, need better drains. Right. That drain itself could be water, could be an issue sometimes, but it also could be maybe there's not enough drains or ways to get the water diverted, right? Yeah. So um, if it's just a drain cleaning out issue, you know, that's low cost. If it's we need more drains, it's high cost. Maybe we'll put a dot in the middle point because we're not sure whether or not that's high or low. Uh, the impact is it um, is it just that small area that it impacts, or is it it's, the it's, or is it? It's, it can be all the streets because there's a lot of little drains at the ends of the streets. That's why I mentioned Grant, Monroe, and Oak okay. because there's just little drain things at the end of all the different streets. And even Lafayette, I think, is. Got the drains. So if they're backing up, we're gonna back up. Okay, so let's do a high impact. Okay, so possibly high impact. Um collapse pipe on Charles Street. We did that collapse pipe on Charles Street. Okay. So that's um that gets excuse me. Isn't the issue why isn't the collapsed pipe being fixed? Isn't that the issue, not the up down arrows, Alan? Uh, no, it's really, really not. The issue so, this is all about government, is what this is. This is not about fixing a pipe for this lady. This is about government, is what it comes down to our maps, our standard operating procedures, our on and our process improvements. It's not about fixing the pipe. It's about passing the buck. It's about, it's about <laughs> fixing the pipe because we're trying to figure out what issues we've got out there. Whether they're really expensive, whether they have a higher low impact. Well, what difference does it make how expensive it is? The pipe needs to be fixed, Alan. We're going to give away millions tomorrow night to a developer, but we don't have money to fix a pipe? I didn't, did you, you said that. It's not me. Well, they told us that they don't have the pipe. All right, so the, there's a collapsed pipe in a certain area. It could be, again, these, these things point to, it could be an isolated issue, it could be a larger issue. We saw. Uh, one of the councilmen tonight talked about, um, you know, the, the water systems that we put in the ground, that every city's put in the ground all over the country, are coming up on sometimes hundreds of years old, and they were meant to last maybe 20, 30, 40 years, and you know, kind of out of sight, out of mind, and now we've got this problem that we need to take care of. So it could be an isolated incident, or it could be a system-wide incident that that's not the only pipe that's collapsing. It could be the entire system. It's we don't. All because of this building back in these brand new airport road area. So, collapse pipe. Could, I say it's, it's cheap. Go ahead, sorry. I say it's cheap. Cheap. Move okay, on. So we'll soon do it. Just like that. Yeah. All right. So this one's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. And impact in terms of like if that's an isolated one, medium impact. Put an arrow in the box and let's move on. <laughs> Practices um, that one I think is low cost. 
Yeah. Hold on one second. Um, excuse me, everybody. There's been a suggestion from somebody in the audience that if you're going to talk and have side conversations, um, please try to try quiet down so that they can hear and we can continue on. Um, we very much appreciate it. Um, so the last one was um, best practices for local ordinances of flooding and individual pumping. I think that's low cost. It's something you can research and look at. Yeah. Um, impact, I think that would possibly be high impact because if we, we don't have the right procedures in place, we can put them in place, we can have an impact city wide. And it's one more, I want to add to that. Just like this gentleman said, yeah. it's not those walls, but always comes in at night. And all the people that violate all the city codes, blowing all their crap into the drains, they do that on weekends and after five because they know the city's not going to be there. If you're flooding, the guy's pumping water right over, and he's not even flooded, he just doesn't want it in his yard. Who do you call? Ghostbusters? Because the cops don't care. <laughs> I don't know what to say. We need a 24 hour line. You can call someone and say, This is happening. Uh, maybe they can't do anything right that moment. Yeah, well, you would think the 24 hour water, they tell you, call in the morning. There's a, there is a 24-hour line, I believe, and for you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but it is the, the county dispatch center, if you call 911, and it goes to the county dispatch center, they have a list of people to contact in emergencies, and especially for that situation, hey, it's flooding, I need you to get somebody out here, or hey, it's flooding, my neighbor pump of water on my property, and they will have numbers to contact with the city. For the I tried that. I have actually tried that out of these eight cases over the last 20 years, and nobody answered the phone. Nobody answered 911? No, I, I got 911 on the phone. I'm an emergency dispatcher for tow truck. Yeah. Got 911, listened to the, went down to the water department, which seemed like what I should be trying to contact. And the phone rang and rang and rang. Called back, not emergency line, explained what was going on, said I needed assistance. Nothing. But they never came the next day either. So no, nobody ever picked up on 911? No. If you've you got an emergency water problem, uh, try to get someone out there, like say your pipe burst, and it's 3 o'clock in the morning, good luck with that. You better have a handle to get your water shut off because no one's coming. Nine times out of ten, they do not answer that phone. Well, no, that's, that's a problem I'll have to talk with the county about because they handle, as you know, regional dispatch. If somebody's not picking up the 911 phone, then that's a health life and safety emergency. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's a quick win. Uh, Best practices for potential needs for flooding response. So this one was um, as people respond to flooding, um, things not to do that makes the situation worse. So looking at standard operating procedures, would you say probably uh, low cost? Yes. Sure. Possibly high impact. Okay, so that's another quick one. All right, proper building codes. Is it, is it hard to look at proper building codes? No. Well, I mean, is it, is it uh, cheap? Yeah. Yeah.